At the conclusion of the second session, the average had strengthened to over 260,000 rand, but things were decidedly subdued at the start of the Sunday session when the top end of the market held up well, but there was a definite fall in the level of the middle market. I think we found a new middle, you know. Um, I think there, there, there's, a, a, there's always money right at the top. The middle has just retreated. Uh, interestingly today, there's been a lot of competition in the market, but the competition's got a ceiling. So I think we've got a new middle. But, you know, I, I guess you've got to go back three or four years and ask ourselves where we were then. And we were making money in those days. You know, people were running profitable operations. And I think if we're fair to the market itself, it needed to retreat at some point because the world has retreated. South Africa has been largely immune to this. And um, I, I guess it was just that we weren't expecting it. I think there's been a knock-on, obviously, from the Cape sale. But I think economic conditions are tight. And so I think breeders will come out of here with a relatively new sense of realism. The big dilemma here is, and people will panic after the sale, uh, without cause, in my view, because the pass, the pass out rate is very low. Um, you know, we're sitting on about 85% sold, which by any standards anywhere in the world is excellent. You know, most sales today, 75% people are saying satisfactory. So we, we must give credit to the breeders, they've met the market, and give credit to the buyers who've, who've taken the market to those sort of levels. But the, the, there has been a definite retreat in where the middle is. And yet the business is getting done. And I think the, the big, the big uh, reaction is likely to be, well, I don't know how many mares I'm going to cover this season or whatever the case may be. And of course, stud masters will be looking at their stud fees and asking what they can reasonably charge. We must never lose sight of the fact. The, may, the mares we're mating this season, we're mating to sell the progeny in 2014. By then, hopefully the world will have recovered its feet. You know, So this is a long game and we need to take a long view. And this is just our turn to get back to where the rest of the world has been, and they've been there for some time. Hopefully ours will be a, a V, not a, not a U, and it'll bump back quite quickly. It's, what is encouraging is that some of the old faces are still here spending money, they're just spending at, at different levels. And the really good horses are making very good money. Now, the, you've used the term old faces. Mm. Are there any new faces? This is the problem. The TBA is uh, fairly proactive yeah. in encouraging new people to come into the industry. Yeah. Is the rest of the industry following suit? I think that the new faces are uh, um, largely uh, uh, enshrined in, in syndications. The, the, the big buzz around the ring has been partnerships and so on and so forth. So I think you're finding the new people around the ring are coming through an individual who we may have known. You know, In other words, they're taking the advice of seasoned horsemen who are doing the business for them. But from what I can make out, the young people around the ring that I've seen, and there are lots of people I haven't seen before here, um, whether they're buyers or not, I don't know, but they're, they're probably here in the guise of syndicate participants. I think that's encouraging in itself, you know? Um, and, but as I said, there's quite a lot of competition on the horses at the moment. You know, it's quite healthy out there. You, you think it's, you, often you might think there's a bidder against a reserve, but the reality is there are two or three. Where they drop out, of course, is another matter, and where the level, where, where the horse finds its level. But I think people have been revising their, their, their reserves all week, and that's why we've had a healthy um, uh, selling rate. Do you think the prospective return for the investor is uh, having an effect in this equation, the fact that stakes in some instances have been lowered rather than uh, increased? You know, I'm one of those guys who doesn't necessarily subscribe to stake levels. I, I believe people race because they, there's, a, there's, there, there's this whole thing about our bo competing when our bodies are no longer able to, and the sport, I think, still drives people. So I think you can get away with a temporary adjustment in stakes, even if it's down rather than up. But the reality is that um, you only have to look at the English model, where the stakes are horrendous, and yet people are still buying horses, and they're paying fortunes for them. The reality is, I mean, well, what we've got to say to ourselves is, what is it that is, that is, that is, that is slowing things down? And I think, if we're honest with ourselves, the economy uh, has had the biggest impact, and the Cape sale taking, no, 90 million, last year we turned 160 at this sale, 90 million is more than half of that, has gone when it used to be spent, uh, well, the Cape sale last year was like 11 or 12 million. So you've got another 78 million coming out of the market at a critical time. And I think that the, the trick for the TBA now is to try and find the balance between the two. They need to work out how they balance up the two sales. I think we might have made a mistake going 600 horses in the second sale. 
And if we're going to take 300, let's assume 120 of those horses or 150 of those horses in Cape Town were national sales caliber horses. You've taken out of 500 before, 150 horses, that leaves you with 350. You might get to 450 in the sale and still have a good sale. I think 600 is overpacking us. And, it, and, and also the Cape sale probably needs to be paired into something particularly special and packaged that way because they, they packaged it right. The question is, how was the mix? And I think they'll find that out with years to come, you know. Um, th there needs to be a balance between the two sales. Let's never forget, this is the premier sale, and it will remain the premier sale. Um, so, so now we must pull the teams together and try and achieve that compromise. The highest price achieved on day three was two million rand, which was given by Marcus Euster for an Argentine-bred filly by Giants Causeway. Consigned by Summer Hill Stud as lot 421, she'll be trained by Gary Alexander.